as most of you know, Filipino martial arts is such a diverse art, uh, diverse system, so many different interpretations of it, so many different weapons, and let alone if you dive further into the weapons, there's different sorts of grips, materials, lengths, so on and so forth. And ultimately, when you take that dive into going deeper into that situation or into the context of how are you going to hold this weapon, how are you going to utilize it, it ultimately gives you another sense of perception or an another sense of uh, a way to look at how you train and how can this benefit you or potentially take away from your utilization. So a couple things, and this can go from weapon to weapon. We're going to focus on two weapons just to show you guys an example. Uh, when we start with the stick, because it's the most common weapon. Uh, when we train with the stick here, there's two things that happen. Your grip orientation and the length of your stick. So usually what happens is with your system is you have your own set of stick and it's usually a common length because a lot of your techniques are based off of that. Now it could be because your system that you train in is more blade oriented, a lot more sword techniques, um, or it could be that it's more stick close range oriented, so on and so forth. So naturally what I hold my stick at is I have an allowance at the bottom and I have what's called a hooking section here. And I usually use that for close range and it also allows me to continue to strike at a quicker rate. Because my stick is, uh, is rattan, and a lot of sticks are, the weight that it carries, I, I'm able to strike a lot quicker. So you see, if I hold it at the very bottom, a pro that I have here is that it has more length, right? As opposed to me holding it here, I'm gonna have to stretch a little more to eventually slash. The con to this is that I don't have as much control because I have a lot more weight on the upper section over here now. So as I swing, it's a lot more heavier and so it really depends on how you want to approach it you know if you are a lot more long range oriented whether it's sparring whether it's self-defense and that's what you want to stick with you know that is a grip to go with if you're more of a, a short person where you have a lot of snaps you have a lot of like this quick follow-throughs and, and sort of close range tactics then holding it up higher might be a better way to go and then we can you know dive really deeper into using this as a hooking section for control and counter offensive so on and so forth but uh, it's just so vast. There's so many things that you can train with and different ways to train it that, you know, for, to go over all of them, it's almost saying that you have to train it one way. And that's the exact opposite of Filipino martial arts. You're supposed to dive into it. You're supposed to build your base and really explore the different ways that you can utilize different weapons. Now, when we talk about a different weapon, we're going to be talking about the blade. So this is probably the second most popular weapon in Filipino martial arts. Um, and we're just talking about the standard uh, daga or we call it a barao in the bias stress mano system. So the knife itself, uh, nine times out of 10, average person picks up the knife, they're gonna hold it in the normal grip. Now, this is very straightforward. It's very easy to translate your stick techniques into the knife because of the orientation. So that makes it universal. And that's what ultimately backs up the fact that uh, Filipino martial arts is called a system and not a style. Now, when we change it into the we call it advanced grip, we call it the ice pick grip or the pakal grip. You know, things start to change a little bit and a lot of this is, it could honestly be personal preference or it could just be technique oriented. So when I hold it in my standard grip, depending on how high my grip is, okay, depending as well as the length of the blade and the length of the handle, it doesn't give you much of a hooking section that you would have in the stick. Now I can still hit you with the butt of the blade here, okay, but it doesn't give me that control aspect. When I flip it around, because the blade is oriented at the bottom and usually the blade is the bigger half of the weapon, I now have this whole orientation here where I can start hooking things. Okay, so it could be technique oriented. Personal preference, it could also incorporate your speed. You know, when you talk about direct translation, this is my angle one, two, three, four, five, six, right? But when I go into my advanced grip here and I start doing the same thing, I may not follow the traditional route anymore. Because of the orientation, I might come back with a blade, right? And that's one of the key aspects with it, is that I can puncture. I can not only lacerate, but I can go straight through and enter with the blade and then turn it into the slash. So as I do that, it gives me more options. It's my personal preference as well, that I, I honestly, I fire back much quicker with a back end strike than I would in the normal grip over here, right? And so you can even see with the orientation, if I did a slash to snap, Right? I would be hitting with the blade, and if my job is to lacerate, I may not get the same effect that I would if I just followed through. Meanwhile, if I'm in the advanced grip here or the pakal grip, I go with my slash and I come back. Now I'm in the pointed position that I can actually go for a puncture or a stab. 
So there, there's so many things that you can do, so many different ways you can train it. Uh, my advice to you guys is to go to the gym, go home when you guys practice, really think about how it feels and how it's going to benefit and complement what you already know. And when it feels uncomfortable, take time to make it comfortable and understand why people use that. And you know, find different instructors, find questions to ask your own instructor and see if they can help you out with that. And until next time, we'll catch you guys then. Thank you.